Welcome back to another What the Hell is This? And this time we're talking about Cursed, the West Korean film from... Oh, where do we put this one? It started shooting long before it uh, was released. And it was... And it, sh it shot like three versions of the film, I think. With some of the same cast members. Um, so, it was... This one came after the Scream films had been out and been successful. And Wes Craven was going to do a film based on Pulse, which was the... Kurosawa film from Japan that film got cancelled and then brought back up and made by someone else but um, Craven was then put on to, was offered a lot of money to do Cursed which was a new Kevin Wilson idea about werewolves, because Wilson and Craven had done massive hits with the Scream series they thought oh this is a this is easy, we'll just shoot the film and that's, that'll be us and we'll have another hit uh, it didn't work, work out so well. First of all, we had two producers and Harvey and Bob Weinstein who couldn't change their mind, but they wanted. Um, I don't think Wilson was on the script for that long. He wrote a, a general time, but he was doing other things too. And basically what happened was they cast a lot of actors, uh, including Skeet Oh, which was in Scream, um, the cast, Christina Ricci, who had been in quite a few big films at that point, and it was famous for Wednesday Adams, but also had been in, you know, um, Sleepy Hollow, and a bunch of other films. She's a very popular actress at that point, and was doing a lot of good good work. Um, Jesse Eisenberg was a young actor, just coming up. He had been in one or two films, indie films, but he was viewed as one of the next big things, which he was going to be. This film did not help though. <laughs> um, but I'm sure we got a lot of money for it over, over time. Um, they had. The, the, oh, which eventually left the project after the first project was abandoned. So basically, what happened was they shot 90% of the project and then they shut it down. They'd pretty much done everything but the, but the finale. And then they shut the film down and just rewrote the whole thing. So they spent a lot of money, and apparently this was not just a kind of limited budget thing. They actually went in and spent a fortune. They got Rick Baker to do the special effects for the werewolves. They had done a lot of work, and then they decided this film does not work, and we're going to rewrite it and then reshoot it and just redo everything, which no one was happy about, because apparently most people were quite happy with the film was going. Apart from the producers. And everyone said the original idea was better than what they end up releasing. It's not a surprise if you've seen what they released. Uh, what they released was terrible and very meandering and had perfect scenes of people who had redone these scenes again and again and were so sick of looking at them. And sometimes you could see the actors had aged a little bit over time and Jesse Eisenberg had hair changes quite extensively. They like started off looking like himself with the curly hair and they ended up being straight hair and it was weird as hell what was going on here. So they, they rewrote the script and made uh, and uh, Skeet which left the project at that point because they changed his character. Um, Ricci and Eisenberg were two of the characters in the first film and then they were made brother and sister for the reshoot. So they reshoot all of their stuff to make them brother and sister, even though they do not look alike. Like, they, they try to make Eisenberg's hair straighter, as if that would help convince people they were sister and brother when they did not look at all alike. Um, so that was, that was just bad. They added some other actors in and they just, um, Joshua Jackson came in for the Ovich part other actors who had been announced for the film left. Some some characters were cut out entirely. They kept a couple of suspense sequences which they'd really shot, which they'd like, but they cut them down a little bit. And then they reshot it again, but this time apparently it was much lower budget because it was like, we've already spent a lot of money in this film. We're going to make it smaller, but we're going to shoot, and shoot some more. So they shoot all this thing. The film that mostly we were going to see in the final release. But they still weren't happy with it. They tested it out and the ending wasn't right. So 
they had another 20 days of reshoots to reshoot the ending to give a big horror ending even though the original ending was apparently a much more downbeat character thing which was the one thing that tested well in the audience was the thing they reshot again so at this point you've had three rounds of shoots you've had god knows how many days and you've got a director and a cast that are pretty much exhausted with the project you know pretty much sick of it and Wes Craven pretty much moved straight on to do Red Eye which was a hit and got him out of this disastrous situation where he was like he ruined the deal he took the money to make this film and it was just like a full on disaster Um, because when the film came out it looked like the film had lots of reshoots now that doesn't have to be bad now Superman 2 famously had lots of reshoots because they shot stuff during the original shoot of Superman then the director and producers had fallen out and Richard Lester was brought in and Richard Lester was a good director who could add stuff of his own and actually made you could sense that there had been reshoots but it still worked but this is different this is a director who brought back in to redo a film which he'd already done thinking he was doing good work and to make a film which he thought was worse than the film he'd already made so you get lots of acting that's well best said as uncommitted you know characters that were and we moved around a director who was like why am I reshooting this again why am I doing these stupid things actors who had done a part one way and had to do a completely different way and you get a sign in some of the other actors like am I doing this right <laughs> it's something you saw in um, when, you, when you watch the Marvels and you've seen there was another film with lots of reshoots you had performances that went from enthusiastic to depressed pretty quickly because obviously they'd been shot by a year apart <laughs> um, and this film is the same thing it's like you get a sense of energy change for the, uh, for the film like some scenes have a bit more energy and other scenes have obviously been shot much later when the director just wants to shoot something and get the hell out of there and the actors are the same and it's like and you just sense it in the film is like get me out of here and so so, the, so by the time you get to the third reshoot to shoot the end in the, his house you're at the point where everyone's knackered and the film and what they shoot there is very uninspired and depressing looking and not very interesting because everyone's just lost the plot at this point everyone's just thinking why am I doing this because I mean the ending makes no sense of like what the character development has been for the last hour and a half <laughs> they've set up Joshua Jackson as a guy who's conflicted it turns out he's a werewolf he accidentally t- infected somebody who turned into the villain of the film this woman who's around getting rid of his exes and is was basically crazy played by Judy Greer who's the one fun part of the film because she still managed to kind of camp up a little bit you have other actors you'll recognise in the film looking lost but by the time we get to the end and Joshua Jackson was meant, was meant to be a guy who wants to die because the curse has become too much to bear and then he turned, into a, he turned psycho there's a big finale scene there's like this makes no sense for the last two acts of the film and the big problem with the film all these reshoots is it feels like a meandering middle act throughout the entire film it feels like uh, in films that don't work you usually have a middle act where everything kind of meanders through and there's plot developments that no one has much passion for the whole film here feels like that like every plot beat that was set up early on where you do you try and put some energy into it to set up the film it's, it's that same middle act monotony of oh, so things happen and it's like no one seems to be affected that much and it's like yeah I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to act as if I care but I just want this nightmare to end it's that kind of thing of people who are not sure if they're going to have to come back and reshoot this thing again and it's just this strange atmosphere of like no matter what the actors are doing and what, how it's been shot no one's quite sure th- there's a feeling of it's people in a bit of a nightmare that's never going to end <laughs> and this thing's going to keep going and going and going and this, this kind of formless feel to the whole film at this point because if they come back and reshot the ending I'm sure they shot other stuff again that 
made no sense. The whole film has that kind of formless feel of just depression and, you know, someone had saved me. <laughs> and that's how you feel like watching it. It's like, where's this going? Where's, there's no momentum to this thing at all. It's like, things happen and the scenes that are meant to happen and things are events occur and then they feel weightless as a well, is going to pee off in the film and it never does and it's like it pays off in little moments but the moments have no real weight to them and you can feel it in the set up and in the subsequent action is like we're just filling time to get this film done it's like there's nothing here dramatic that actually you should be interested in it's a really bad TV episode for a lot of it, and it's, you have a lot of actors who are better than it, looking lost, and it's like, um, am I doing this right? Because probably they play a different character in the original cut, and now they've switched it around to the cast motivations don't tie together, and it's like, what am I actually playing? And you get that through the film in a sense of people are not really sure who they are, what they are in the film, and it's just like, Anticlimactic the whole way through the film. Just, uh, just nothing has any real weight to it. And it also has the biggest copper ending ever, which is to avoid becoming a werewolf if you've been bitten, if you kill the head werewolf, just like killing the head vampire in all of vampire films, you no longer turn into the creature you've, you've been turned into for the whole film. That is the laziest cop out ever in a horror movie. I hate it. It's so lazy. It's like, if. Well, it doesn't make any sense. It's like if you have a virus in you and you're going to turn you, that's going to happen. And so just work on that rather than, oh, we kill this thing, we we can become ourselves again. And it's just like, and it's done so lazily here that you know where it's going instantly. And it's like, ah, uh, really? Ah. Uh. Such a lazy option for a plot device and. It's, it's a weightless plot device. It just suddenly means I know what the ending's going to be as soon as you hear that in a movie with a monster kill the original one. My kind of interest in the film just goes to, to zero usually. I mean, the only time it's kind of worked at all was in Fright Night because that Fright Night was so kind of... By the time it got to that, it was like going so fast and it was throwing tons of stuff at the screen that was kind of fun. But even then, it, it took away some of the weight that the film could have had, but it's still because of the film it was, it was okay. They had it in Lost Boys, I thought it was terrible. They had it, and they've had it, and every time you see it in a film, you know, oh, this film is going to be bad. This film is going to be just going to be weightless. There's going to be no stakes at all for any characters. Yeah, no, I mean, this no stakes joke. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a lame joke for a lame convention. But they have that, and I bet you Craven knew that was lame. I bet you he knew that was the dumbest thing ever at that point. It was like, oh God, I'm doing this bloody idea now. Because he's smart enough to know. He's made, made enough horror movies. He knows that that's a copper, and it takes away from any terror you can build up. And the whole film just feels like uh, it's full of stuff that his heart was not in. And him and the actors were trying their best to make it look professional, but it was like... And everyone who talks about it who was involved all have the same kind of thing of that's a massive waste of time. The original idea was better. It was studio to death and it made it so much worse and they spent a fortune for a film that didn't even make any money. It came out and bombed. And they spent so much money on it it was never going to have a chance of making money back. And it was like, you might as well have just done the first one and just released it and let it bomb if you didn't like it. Rather than just invest all this money to keep on reshooting and reshooting and reshooting. For something you never had an idea of what it should be in the first place, so it was never going to work. It's a, it's a, just a studio thing of we'll keep spending money and we might get lucky, and it's like nope, this film is just formless mess. So that's my what the hell is this? This is this is one of those ones that was kind of hard to sit through because it was like obviously a lot of talented people in a bad situation, been the pawns of people who are making idiotic decisions. So yeah, it's. It's a bad movie. Avoid it, if, you know, if you can, because it's it's not painful. It's just boring. It's just utterly boring, which is a, the worst thing for a horror movie to be. Just be as boring as this. So, 
Hope you enjoyed this video. That's me for now. Right, bye.